So when I was 17, I joined the Navy. Now, I don't know why, I have no idea. I have like absolutely no idea. But I remember at the time I wanted to be a pilot, so I was gonna join the Air Force. And in year 11, I was in year 11 at school, I went to ADF recruitment, I wanted to be a pilot. And they said, yes, that is every other young bloke out there. And then in year 12, you know, I went for it again and there was a real possibility that I could make it. I'd finished a couple of number of tests, I had two or three more and it scared the hell out of me. I went, wow, oh, I can't leave home, I'm too scared. I've got it too good, I'm the youngest of four. I live on the beach, like I've got a really nice life. I'm playing sport, I was, you know, girls and everything was great for me. Not long after that, strangely enough, I dropped the Air Force thing and all of a sudden I wound up in the Navy. Now, I'll never forget the day I was a swimming instructor and I had a phone call from ADF Recruitment saying, oh, we've accepted your position and instead of January next year, could you come in 30th of August? Now, this is like the 15th of August here. And I remember this day, it was a Thursday, I rang my father and I said to him, oh, ADF Recruitment have just rang and they've offered me an opportunity to join you know, six months earlier in two weeks' time. What do I do? And he said, well, an opportunity's presented itself, like, do it. Now, he never forced me into it. It was a decision that I made and, and so I did. And I had this two weeks of just roller coaster. I was I was only 18 at the time, and you know I was playing sport at a high level. And we had our finals coming up, and I didn't want to let my teammates down. I had you know all the, a good life. There was so much uncertainty and doubt. And to this day, I have no idea why I rocked up. But all of a sudden, the next thing I know, I was rocking up, getting screamed at. They were shaving my head, and it was like, what happened? Two weeks ago, I was living this life, and now I'm in this place that this is horrible. This is like hell. And that's the way it sort of started for me, my journey. And you know, there's been times in my life where those challenges and those moments where I'm like, Jesus, how did I get here? They always present itself. And the one thing that I've never really been held back by is, I guess, the fear of uncertainty and to be scared to commit to something. I remember submarines. Um, again, people ask me, why did you join submarines, Rob? Like, what is it about it in a submarine that you wanted to do? And why would you want to operate under those conditions? Now, the truth is, right, I was in love with a girl. She moved to Western Australia and I was East Bay. So the only time or the only opportunity I could be with her is if I went to submarines because I was an East Bay sailor. So when people say, Rob, why did you join submarines? It's because of a girl. And that's the truth. Now, everyone goes, that's a crazy commitment to submarines for a girl. I don't regret it because I married her. And she's epic, man. She's so good. And I've had four beautiful boys as a result. I remember my submarine training, my submarine escape training. It was one of the most insanely intense and frightening experiences of my life because you go on this little cylinder and they fill it up with water and you're in this tiny thing and you're gonna shoot out through this this little you know, hatch. And I'm like, how am I gonna fit through this hatch? And then what happens? You know, I'm 99 foot of water below the surface. This is insane. But then you just do it and you get up there and it's, it's just crazy. It's this crazy ride, I can't explain it. You know, and I lived in Africa. You know, I was consulting in South Sudan, Nigeria, Somalia, like I've been all over. And again, I'm working in conditions where you've got people in and around you that, you know what? They're angry people and all they know is violence. And it's a strange situation. I remember when I got first told, well, we have to now quickly head into South Sudan for literally three days to do something. And I'd never been there before. And all of a sudden I was on a plane heading into South Sudan and there was fires everywhere. And I'm thinking, oh, fire out this. What am I walking into or what am I flying into? And I later realized it's because at that time, seasonal, they light fires because then the little rains and the big rains come and it puts the fires out. It's how they rejuvenate. But I didn't know that at the time. And I'm like, far out. The country was at war between the Dinka and the Nua tribes. And I'm like, what am I doing? I started my first firm because I was so just, oh, like to Chevron, I was so frustrated at the lack of professionalism, diligence in consulting that I wanted to start my own firm because I didn't want to be attributed like the rest of these people. Again, what did I know about business? Nothing, but all of a sudden I had my own company. I started advising, I had clients and I didn't know what was right. I didn't know what was wrong and I didn't know how to start a business or do a business. I just knew that I needed to, I had to. And then I did that and that became successful. And then I started another business because I wasn't fulfilled. So I started the other business and I started mentoring people and all of a sudden I had a phone call from an NRL team. Rob, we need your help. I want you to mentor some of our players and mentor our team. I had a phone call from a university. Can you lecture and help with our students? I had business CEOs ringing, Rob, I know what you're doing and I want some of that. Now, why am I telling you this? I'm telling you because I was never gifted at school. I never had a real good friendship group. I didn't really fit in. Like I would just sort of meander through school. I had people that I knew and people knew of me, but I didn't have anywhere that I truly belonged and felt comfortable. On my last day at school, I caught the school bus home. And I remember I had these little group of kids. And they're like, didn't you just graduate today? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, you're a loser. You're catching the bus home by yourself. And at the time I was kind of like, huh, maybe I am a loser, but you're right. I am catching the bus home by myself. And it didn't really bother me. But why am I saying this? Like, I was never like gifted. I was never like, you know, I played sport at a, at a very high level, but I was a lot better in my head than what I was in practice too. You know what I mean? And 
I guess I'm, I'm saying all these things is I look at my life today and I'm 34 and you know I've done Navy, submarines, you know, lived in Africa, consulted in Africa, uh, working with tribal warlords and rebels and you know military and government officials overseas. I've started successful companies. I've lectured in university. Um, I mentor elite. I'm in elite sports at the moment. Like when I look at all these things, I'm 34 years old. Like I've got a beautiful wife that I've been with since I was, you know, 22. I've got four amazing kids, and I've lived a life. Now, I guess the learning across my life has been that none of what I've done has ever made sense. Like it wasn't my intention. Like to do all these things. And now I look at what my life now, and I would never have thought I could have ever achieved this. And I never could have thought that I could be in stadiums with professional sporting teams and, and players ringing me saying, Rob, I need your help. My performance is down. Or I've got, you know, I've got coaches, head coaches saying, Rob, can you come into my office? I need, I need a strategy. I need to talk. I would never have dreamed of these things. I've got clients in four different countries at the moment. And there was no plan, but there was no fear either. It doesn't make sense and I can't tell you why I did these things because I, I can't answer that. There was fear, there was uncertainty. I'm like, what am I, what, what submarines? Why am I escaping from water hero? Why am I dealing with this tribe in South Sudan? Why am I doing this? Why am I going there? Never made sense, but I did it. I didn't even think. I just went, yeah, I'm, I'm doing it. What I would do is that I always had an intention, an objective, and I always worked that out. And this is what I need to do. And I didn't know what to do next, but I knew and backed myself that I knew what I would need to know of what to do next when I needed to know. Now, I'm going to repeat that. I didn't know necessarily what I had to do next, but I trust and backed self. And I knew that when I need to know what I need to do, I will know. And I will then highlight and I will accept and I will then take action on that. So the big learning that I guess I really want to reflect on is sometimes things don't make sense. And what we like to do is we like to analyze the data, analyze all the facts. And the reason we do that is because it holds us back. And then what we go is, oh, I'm not too sure if I really want to do that based on the facts. And what that is, that's just fear. That's just you overanalyzing all these things and trying to come up with a reason that you can swallow, that you can go, yeah, that's a good reason of why you shouldn't do these things. For whatever reason, I never had that. I was always just go, do it bang, done that. Then I look back and I'm like, wow, that was insane. That was intense. Like, and I really did that. That's cool. So what I know is that when you don't sit back and wait for the, the perfect conditions, when you don't wait for the right wave or when you don't wait for the, the right cloud formation and 26 degrees with a gentle breeze, because those conditions that you wait for, they never come. Every day you're presented with opportunities, experiences. You're presented with life but you just neglect it. You just remain ignorant to it. And I don't understand that either. I get you may have demons of your past that you're dealing with. I get that you may believe that you can't do these things because you didn't have a, you know, a good upbringing or because you haven't had opportunity or because you've never come from money or whatever it is that you tell yourself. You swallow this story and you make it your own. So you believe that you cannot achieve these things. But I'm here to tell you that that is wrong. That is crap. And the reason I'm so passionate about it is because it's true. Because you've learned from someone or you've subjected yourself to an environment or you've been in an environment where you didn't fit in and you didn't belong. And people threw things at you and it stuck and it still sticks to you. It's time to shed these layers. It's time to just say yes, just to engage. And it doesn't make sense. You don't know why. It doesn't matter either. Because you know what? The universe will support you. The universe will help you when you're a good person, when you lead with intention, when you have love in your heart, when you have strength of mind and courage in character. This is what will make it for you. The strategy, the plan, it'll work itself out as long as you commit to it, as long as you back yourself. As I said, I was never the smartest kid out there. I know that when I was in year four, I weighed the most. And that played on me. I weighed the most. I thought I was really fat and unattractive. That's the truth. There's all these things in our life that we think about. You know, and there's some of the things that I think about. As I said, I never really had a place of belonging at school. I weighed the most in year four. I caught the school bus home when I graduated, when everyone else was getting in their cars and going to like McDonald's or the big shopping center. But that's okay. That doesn't matter. All that matters is who you are today. All that matters is if you don't like who you are today. If you don't like where you're going. Cool. Pivot. Go again. Learn. Find a strategy. Get a mentor. Get clear on what it is that you want. If you don't know what you want, don't just stay stagnant, move. How do we move? Engaging with people, connecting with people, connecting with people that drive you, connecting with people that inspire you, learning, reading, speaking, communicating. What this does is it gives you new information. This new information gives you new perspectives. These new perspectives challenge old ways of thinking. 
thinking modalities that tell you that you can't. All of a sudden you're like, hey, I don't believe that. I just need to peel back these layers, detach from the old, bring on some new information and open myself up to growth and change. And I'm that guy. And that's really exciting. I'm here to tell you that you can do it. As long as your head lifts off the pillow, you have all you need to win, to succeed, whatever that version is for you. You don't need to be anyone else because you are one of 7 billion people. That's how unique you are. So I don't want you to change. I don't want you to feel like you have to either. Now, this is my story. My story is one of I never hesitate. I never stop and overanalyze things. I do. Now, when you do all the time, you get it wrong a fair bit as well. I'm not going to lie to you. But in getting it wrong is where my true growth and my true success have come from. And because of that, I don't fear it. I have no fear of failure. It doesn't exist. It never has. Because the art of doing teaches you so much about self that you don't have time to even want to fear failure. You don't have time to sit back and go, I'm so scared. It's so uncertain out there. I might fail. Cool. You might not either, brother. And I guarantee when you do, you only ever win because you learn, you grow. You get more hungry for success. I want you to reflect on this. I want you to contextualize this with your life. I want you to ask you this question. Would my childhood self be proud of the man that stands before me today? Do I have more to give? Is there any regrets right now that if it ended tomorrow, regrets of the people that I didn't love, the people I didn't say I love you to, the people I never helped, the things I never achieved, the business I never started, the body I never had, the girl of my dreams I couldn't even find myself to communicate with there. Is there any regrets in your life? Because if there are, brother, then we've got some work to do. Lastly, I want you to know that you deserve it. I know you don't have the answers. You don't need to. Your challenges in life are high. Your skill sets are low. It's just about learning what you need to learn to navigate this path for yourself. Get back to self. Come back to who you are. Identify who you are as a man and then go forth. A man who doesn't know himself, he doesn't know life. He doesn't know how to connect to life. Therefore, you can't win. You hold the key when you choose to step up, when you choose to raise your standards. Good luck with it.